welcome you all to session 4 of the chapter units and measurements till now we have understood how to measure the length this session we will be learning how to measure the mass right so first of all what is the meaning of mass mass is nothing but amount of matter present in a substance for example if i want to measure what is the mass of this duster i use common balance that is takkadi right so the objects whatever you see around you let me call them as common object and the masses of common objects can be measured by the instrument called common balance right so if i want to measure the mass of sun earth and other planets i cannot use common balance i need to go with another kind of method right we cannot go directly and measure the mass of sun here right so we need to measure it by an indirect method so that indirect method is gravitational method by using newton's law of gravitation we can measure the mass of heavier objects like sun and planets now here right so in the similar manner if i want to measure very light objects for example if i want to measure the masses of atoms molecules right we need a device right so that device let me call it as mass spectrograph right by using mass spectrograph we can measure the masses of lighter objects like atoms molecules so these are the instrument used to measure different kind of masses of the objects now here right okay now now let me move on to the units now here right so what are the units used to measure the masses of these kind of objects now here right so first of all the si unit the si unit of mass is we know the si unit of mass is kilogram that is kg right si unit of mass is kg right okay but if i want to measure the masses of atoms or molecules atoms and uh, molecules masses of atoms and molecules are measured are measured in okay masses of atoms and molecules are measured by spa, uh, mass spectrograph no here right so the units used to measure the masses of atoms and molecules is unified unified atomic mass unit unified atomic mass unit right it is denoted by u or a m u right so the unit used to measure the masses of atoms and molecules is un unified atomic mass unit it is denoted by u or a m u so define a m u how much is one atomic mass unit one atomic mass unit is equal to 1/12th 1/12th of mass of one atom of carbon 12 isotope right if you take carbon 12 isotope the 112th of mass of one atom of carbon 12 isotope so this much mass is nothing but 1 amu let us calculate how much is that now right so 112th shall i take like this this is 112th right so that is mass of one atom of carbon 12 isotope that is carbon 6 12 right mass of one atom of carbon 12 isotope into 1 divided by 12 gives one atomic mass units and it came to be 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg it is nothing but 1 amu right so what is 1 amu how much is 1 amu 1 amu is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg and it is 1 amu that is atomic mass unit or unified atomic mass unit it can be denoted by u or amu so 1 amu is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg right the masses of the objects range from mass of electron to the mass of observable u universe let me tell like that now right mass of electron you know it is a 10 raised to minus 30 it ranges from 10 raised to minus 30 to 10 raised to 55 kg this is the mass of the observable universe right so this is the range of the mass right so this is how the mass can be measured now let us move on to the next one that is measurement of time now let us understand how to measure time so what is time 
time is the duration of an event in olden days time was measured by sun dials like jantar mantar if you go to new delhi or jaipur please do visit jantar mantar jantar is a word derived from yantra means instrument mantar means measurement so it was the instrument used to measure time in those days then came pendulum clocks the oscillations of the pendulum gave the time in those days nowadays we use atomic clock for the measurement of time that too particularly cesium clock and this atomic clock is based upon periodic vibrations of cesium atom right why only cesium atom because cesium is an atom which has stable vibrations that is the reason why cesium was used for the measurement of time now the question arises here is which clock gives the perfect timing as we have observed many clocks right give us different timings at a particular instant so which clock gives the perfect timing there is a clock kept at national physical laboratory new delhi and that clock is cesium clock and it maintains indian standard of time i think you have heard about it right whenever the time is given it is like a 10 o'clock ist what is ist indian standard of time which clock is maintaining that that is the cesium clock which is kept at a national physical laboratory in new delhi and that clock gives the perfect timing and all other clocks are kept according to that cesium clock so for the measurement of time nowadays we are using a cesium clock or atomic clock so this was all about measurement of time physics is all about measurements whenever we measure a physical quantity we describe it by two terminologies one is accuracy and another one is precision okay let me begin with the first one that is what is accuracy okay let me take an example right i'll be taking the length of the standard chalk right okay the length of the standard chalk is 7.5 cm let me consider that and let us understand what is accuracy consider consider a chalk of length okay the standard length of the chalk is 7.5 cm okay i will be taking uh, the chalk and i will be measuring what is the length of this chalk right i will be uh, giving this chalk to two students right let me name it as student a and another one is student b and i will intimate them to find what is the length of this chalk and student a comes with the observation student a measures the length of the chalk as student a measures it as 7.4 cm and student b measures the length of the chalk as 7.3 cm right okay student a measures 7.4 student b measures 7.3 cm and these are the measured value okay let me call this as true value right so let me call 7.5 is the true value of the length of the chalk and these values let me call it as measured value measured value okay now which value is more close to the true value 7.4 and 7.3 7.4 is more close to 7.5 that is why let me conclude that student a is more accurate than student b okay let me conclude that that is student a is more accurate more accurate than what we said here b right so what is the meaning of accuracy accuracy means how much close the measured value is to the true value that closeness is called as accuracy let me define what is accuracy accuracy is nothing but closeness of measured value closeness of measured value to the true value true value of a physical quantity of a physical quantity okay the closeness of the measured value to the true value of a physical quantity is called uh, what we say here accuracy accuracy means how much close our reading is with the true value right so the, if the closeness is more then the readings are more accurate that is why 
I said that student A is more accurate than student B in here, right? Okay, now let me take another one example. I already told you that uh, the time is measured by atomic clock or cesium clock, right? Indian standard time is maintained by the cesium clock, which is at uh, what we say national physical laboratory right in NPL there is a cesium clock which maintains the time in India right India standard time is maintained by that clock and if you see what is the timing of that clock if it is 8 15 what we say now here am right there the timing of the standard uh, cesium clock which is kept at national physical laboratory is 8 15 am and i ask the same thing right i ask student a and student b to tell me what is the time okay they are wearing their own watches and uh, they reply that right a measures student a measures time as 8 10 am right if you observe his clock in his clock the time is 8 10 am and the student B measures time as 8, 12 a.m. And he says that, okay, now the time is 8, 12. Then who is more accurate, right? If you compare with what is this value, let me call this as true value, right? So this is the actual value, true value. And these are measured value, right? Which value is more close to the true value? 8, 12 is more close to the 8 15 then i can say that b is what we say here more accurate right the clock of the b student is more accurate than the a student now here right okay so this is how we define accuracy whenever we measure a physical quantity we describe it by two terminologies one is accuracy and another one is precision right you have understood what is accuracy accuracy is closeness of a measured value to the true value of a physical quantity that is called as accuracy now let us move on to the second terminology that is what is precision now here right okay now if you want to discuss what is the meaning of precision let me take another one example and uh, let me discuss about that now here right so what is precision we understood what is accuracy accuracy is closeness of measured value to the true value of a physical quantity now what is the meaning of precision let me take the same example now right let me consider uh, consider consider the length of the chalk consider the measurement let me call like this consider the measurement of length of chalk length of chalk right okay i just uh, give the standard chalk right so i will be giving the chalk to three students let me call it as a b and a c now here right a measures a measures as 7.4 centimeter and he uses what we say now here meter scale let me call it as meter scale right okay he uses the scale right and he measures the length as 7.4 centimeter right the normal scale what uh, you use right let me call like this by using the scale what he has he measures the length of the chalk as a 7.4 centimeter okay then what b will do he measures the same chalk right he, he is measuring the length of the chalk but what he do he just go to the lab and he gets the vernier calipers and he measures what is the length of the chalk and vernier calipers use the reading like this 4 7.42 centimeter and what he is using he is using a vernier calipers right by using vernier calipers he measures the length of the chalk and it comes to be 7.42 centimeter right okay then c measures the same chalk right he measures the same chalk and he, he goes to the lab now he brings screw gauge by taking the screw gauge he calculates what is the length of the chalk and he tells me that the length of the chalk is 7.428 and he uses screw gauge he uses screw gauge right a uses scale b uses burning calipers c uses screw gauge right the first reading is 7.2 second reading is 7.42 third reading is 7.428 then who is more precise right c is more precise than a and b then what is meant by precision precision means okay let me tell you what actually the precision is how to define precision it is the extent extent to which the measure the physical quantity is measured 
extent to which physical quantity is measured okay let me call extent to which measurement of physical quantity is then extent to which the physical quantity is measured is called what we say now here precision right so extent to which physical quantity is measured is called precision so what is the extent we have three decimal point here we have two decimal point here we have only one decimal point extent to which physical quantity is measured that is called as what we say now here precision he is more precise right c is more precise than a and b let me call who is more precise c is more precise than what we said here a and b student c is more precise than a and b because the extent to which he measures the physical quantity is more than here right okay the extent to which physical quantity is measured that is called as precision right so whenever we measure a physical quantity we want both accuracy as well as precision in that way we need to measure a physical quantity okay let me take another one example right okay i asked two students one is student a and let me call it as student b no here right okay and i asked them what is the time now and student a replies the time is 8:40 right so 8:40 and the, at the same instant if i ask the Uh, what is the time to the student b he replies he is wearing a digital clock and he replies that it is 840 with 28 seconds now here right so 8 hour 20 40 minutes 28 seconds he says 8 hour 40 minutes then who is more precise yes b is more precise than a means extent to which a physical quantity is measured and that extent is called as what we say here precision right you need to understand what is the difference between accuracy and precision what is accuracy accuracy is the closeness closeness of a measured value to the true value what is precision precision is the extent to which the physical quantity is measured that is called as precision so whenever we measure a physical quantity our readings must be in a such a way that it must be accurate as well as precise right so these are some of the characteristics of the uh, readings whatever we take while measuring a physical quantity whenever we measure a physical quantity there will be errors in that for instance let me take the time in your clock is different than time in your dad's clock again it will be different than time in your mother's clock and it will be different than the time which is shown by the wall clock right so this is the thing what you observe in day to day life whenever we measure a physical quantity there exists errors and we will be understanding what are these errors and how to eliminate those errors now here right okay let us understand under the section that is uh, errors in measurement right so what are the errors in the measurement what is the meaning of error first let us understand that now right so error is the difference right let me call error is the difference between which value true value actual value the difference between true value and measured value measured value is called what we say here error what is the meaning of error what is error it is the difference between true value and measured value is called error right okay so what is true value okay i told you it is the actual value of that physical quantity for instant which clock gives the perfect timing at an instant the clock which is kept at national physical laboratory the cesium clock which is kept at national physical laboratory gives the perfect timing if the time in that clock shows 8:15 and the time in your clock shows 8:16 then what is the error error is 1 minute error right if your father's clock shows 8:20 then what is the error it is 5 minutes right 5 minutes error right so the clock which is uh, kept at your home now right the wall clock if it shows 8:25 then what is error 10 minutes right if i compare with the true value what is this value this value is called as true value which is the actual value and what are this these are the measured value if i am calling it as measured value right so if you compare these two the difference between the true value and the measured value gives us the error so what is error error is the difference between true value let me call it as true value and 
observed value or we can call it as measured value let me use the word like this measured value right the difference between true value and measured value this difference is called as error right so whenever we make uh, the measurement of physical quantity there exists error how much is the error so we get the measurement of the error by taking the difference of the true value with the measured value now here right okay so this is called as error and in this error there are two types okay let me take like this types of errors okay let me take now here types of errors the first type is systematic error systematic error right the second one is random error let me call it as a random error so errors are of two types one is systematic error and another one is random error okay let us understand the first one that is systematic error what is what are systematic errors let me take like this now right systematic errors so what are these okay what are systematic errors the name itself says the errors are in a systematic pattern right so these are the errors which occur which occur according according to a definite pattern right errors which occur according to definite pattern definite pattern the errors will be in a definite pattern right errors which occur according to definite pattern due to due to known causes due to known causes are called what we say here systematic errors okay these are called as systematic errors so what are systematic errors these are the errors which occur according to definite pattern right these occur according to definite pattern and the known causes right due to known causes we know the cause behind that error if it is so then they are called as systematic error okay for example let me take an example you will come to know what is actually systematic error is right so it is a usual habit in our home that we keep the clock 5 minutes for, uh, forward now here right so so if it is uh, if it is 8 o'clock right the clock at our home it will show at 8 fine now here right so in that way we will set our clock so that we want to go, reach at the Uh, work at a perfect timing now here right to maintain that so it is uh, the habit that okay we have kept 5 minutes what we say here forward then what if the time is 8 o'clock what your what will your clock shows now here right it shows 8 58 what we say here 5 because we have kept 5 minutes forward now here right okay if it is 8 o'clock it shows 8 5 when it is 9 o'clock your clock shows 9 5 right if it is 9:30 your clock shows 9:35 right if it is 10 o'clock your clock shows 10:5 okay come on tell me what is the error here how much is the error 5 minutes how much is the error 5 minutes how much is the error here 5 minutes here also 5 minutes means there is error but that error is in a systematic pattern that is in the definite pattern the error repeats but it is in a definite pattern so this kind of errors are called as which errors no here systematic errors and due to what no here known causes we know the cause behind the errors what is the cause behind the error we only have kept it right we have changed the the measurement right so uh, we have forwarded it 5 minutes no here right so because of that reason these errors occur and these errors are in a definite pattern right so because of this we get the systematic errors right okay so this is one of the reason right we have manipulated the instrument itself right so since we have we have manipulated it it shows error in a systematic pattern right if it shows the error in systematic pattern so those are called as systematic errors and these errors can be removed right how to remove this error okay keep uh the clock as it is which was earlier now here right okay we are not manipulating anything now here right what is the time uh, standard time which is maintained at cesium clock okay we will be keeping that at the same timing now here then then this errors can be removed do you remember this systematic errors can be removed why because we know the causes behind it now here right okay so what are the causes let us understand what are the sources of systematic errors let me call what are the sources of systematic errors 
let me take the sources of systematic errors okay the sources of systematic errors are first one what is that now here instrumental error the first reason is what now here instrumental error let me take now here instrumental error right so the first cause is that what are the sources of systematic error the first source is instrumental error there will be error in the instrument itself right if it is so so that kind of uh, error is called as what we say right? systematic error it is due to uh, instrumental error now here right so this is one of the reason what are the sources of systematic error one is instrumental error which uh, we have kept it now here right so i think uh, uh, you know that whenever we measure uh, the length of uh, the room now here what is the wall we will be using meter scale if there is error in the meter scale look we will adjust our reading right if it is if the at the beginning of the meter scale if 1 cm is cut now here right whenever we measure it as 40 cm right we say that it is 39 because again we are measure we are correcting it now here right so whenever it is 40 cm it shows 41 why because 1 cm has been cut now here right so that is that is the thing if there is error in the instrument right so that uh, instrument shows systematic error so we know what is that uh, what is the reason for that systematic error there is the uh, there is error in the instrument itself right so this is one of the source okay it might happen like this also right so the second one is imperfection imperfection in experimental technique experimental what we say here technique so systematic errors occur when there is imperfection in experimental technique if you don't know how to uh, take that reading right if you are if you are not knowing that there is imperfection in experimental technique technique then also systematic error occurs for example let me take if i am considering thermometer we know we use uh, thermometer to measure what we say here temperature right okay if i am considering this is thermometer there is a mercury at the bottom right you know that right whenever we measure what is the temperature of the room we hold the thermometer like this and measure so it gives what we say now here the temperature that is the room temperature now right right so uh, but if i give you thermometer and may i tell you to measure what is the temperature of the room right if you don't know to measure the temperature if you hold the thermometer at the bottom and if you check it out it shows different reading there will be error in the reading because if you hold at the bottom your uh, heat also flows through the thermometer right so your temperature will also add to the room temperature it will not show the exact room temperature right so the temp if you hold at the bottom again the level of the mercury increases because you are also adding heat to that thermometer that is imperfection in experimental technique if it is 38 if i am asking that it is 38 degree celsius if you hold like this it will be showing 40 degree celsius whenever it is 60 degree celsius if you hold like this it will be showing 62 degree celsius there also you get a systematic error but you know the reason behind it what is the reason behind it it is imperfection in experimental technique you don't know to uh, calculate the reading in the instrument if you are if you are not perfect then no systematic errors occur and it can be removed by uh, doing the experiment in a correct way so do remember systematic errors can be rectified right okay the third one is personal error right so let me take what are the sources of systematic error the third one is personal errors right because uh, you don't know right for example uh, whenever you do an experiment now here right for example if you are measuring what is the deflection shown in the galvanometer right so galvanometer or voltmeter or ammeter let me take like this if you are reading the meters now here right okay if your three students are standing in front of meter if i ask what is the voltage right so all the three will give different readings right who is standing exactly at the middle if he says okay there is there is deflection of 30 divisions right who is standing this side right so he sees it has 29 divisions because he is seeing from this angle now here right he sees it will be uh, back side now here and the student who is standing this side he says that 41 what we say now here if it is 30 divisions he says that it is 31 because he sees in this angle right so if there are three students he says the division is 31 right he says the division is 30 uh, deflection and this person says 29 deflection in the uh, what we say now here galvanometer if i am saying like this now right okay yes they measure the physical quantity all the three will give different because they are standing at the different positions 
right so these kind of errors are called as personal errors so whenever we measure a physical quantity we need to stand exactly in front of it and we need to measure then only the readings will be correct otherwise there will be errors in the what we say here quantity which is measured whenever he measures for example if a galvanometer deflects 10 divisions the middle person says okay there is 10 division deflection who is standing here he says 11 11 what we say here deflection who is standing here he says that it is 9 division deflection means every time the, they measure the readings there will be errors right errors in the first person and third person and that error are in a definite pattern because they are standing in that position itself right so this kind of errors are called as systematic errors and this is due to the errors right which is uh, we can call it as personal errors and that can be rectified right whenever this person says he need to stand at the middle and read right if he is standing at a third person also must stand at the middle and read so that is how the errors can be rectified right okay systematic errors are the errors which occur according to definite pattern right and the reasons are known so what are the reasons there are three main reasons for the systematic errors the first one is instrumental error there is error in the instrument the second one is imperfection in experimental technique and the third one is personal errors so these are the sources of systematic errors now let us move to the second that is what are random errors okay let me take errors are of two types systematic and random okay let me go with the second one that is what are random errors there are two types systematic and random so let us check it out what are random errors so these are errors which occur randomly okay let me take right here the errors which occur randomly right due to due to unknown causes due to unknown causes are called what we say right here random errors right random errors so what are random errors these occur randomly due to unknown causes right there may be errors in the measurements and they occurs randomly there is no perfect uh, uh, way like this here. there is no definite pattern here right so it occurs randomly one time it decreases one time it decreases like this right okay errors which occur randomly and the reason we don't know due to unknown causes those kind of errors are called as random errors right it may happen like this whenever uh, you are measuring what is the voltage in an experiment whenever you do the experiment and we tell you to calculate what is the voltage right so suddenly if there is fluctuation in the voltage at your home now here right in your lab also if there is suddenly fluctuation then the reading will change right once fluctuation means voltage may increase or decrease right suddenly there will be fluctuation in the voltage right if there is fluctuation in the voltage if it is 4 volts once it was 4.1 again it shows 3.5 again 4.1 there is fluctuation in the uh, voltage in here that kind of errors which occur so those errors are called as random errors and the causes we don't know suddenly there is a fluctuation in the voltage right so it occurs suddenly and the causes are unknown here right so we don't know why actually the fluctuation has happened anything in here right so if you don't know the reason behind it and the, the errors which occur randomly that kind of errors are called as what we say in here random errors right and one thing random errors cannot be rectified because we don't know when uh, the voltage will fluctuate itself right so we cannot rectify this and we don't know the causes but we know what are the causes behind it what are the reasons behind it what are the sources behind it but we don't know what are the causes behind random errors so do remember errors are of two types one is systematic error and another one is a random error okay now after completing the types of errors right so let, let me move on to the next one what is the least count okay let me take what is a least count so whenever we measure whenever we take an instrument to measure a physical quantity first of all we identify its least count what is least count least count is the smallest value it is the smallest value that can be measured that can be measured by an instrument by an instrument that smallest value is called least count 
the name itself says least least means smallest smallest value that can be measured by an instrument is called least counts right so whatever instrument you take that instrument has its least counts right for example let me take now here least counts okay the least count of clock okay come on tell me if i'm taking the what is the least count of the clock now here right we know what is the least count what is the minimum value that can be measured by the clock time right so what is the measurement of the time what we do so what is the minimum value that can be measured by the clock now here right the watch or the clock the least count of a clock is 1 second right so you can measure up to seconds now here right so what is the least count of clock the least count of clock is 1 second right so whenever you take what is the least count of scale right so the scale what you use come on tell me what is its uh, least count minimum count right if you see there will be 15 cm now right in 1 cm how many divisions will be there 10 divisions means what is the value of uh, smallest division in the scale now here that is 0.1 cm okay come on tell me what is the least count of the scale what you use that is 0.1 cm right so that is the least count of scale right so if you take vernier calipers the least count of vernier calipers the least count of vernier calipers is 0.01 cm right it will give the reading up to two decimal points so let me take what is the least count of vernier calipers 0.1 cm 0.01 cm right so what is the least count of screw gauge right if i am taking the screw gauge what is the least count 0.001 cm because it can give the reading up to three decimal points right the least count of screw gauge is 0.001 cm 0.001 cm least count of scale is 0.1 cm least count of watch or the clock what you use that is 1 second so what are these these are the smallest value that can be measured by an instrument and the error in this least count is called as least count error right the smallest value that can be measured by an instrument is called least error least count and the error which occurs in the least count is called as least count error and the error in the instrument and the error which occurs during during the calculation of the least count that kind of error is called as least count error right so first of all you need to understand what is the least count every instrument has its least count it is the smallest count that can be measured by the instrument and error in the least count is called as least counts errors and uh, we have seen some of the least counts of the instrument what we use in a right so this was all about the errors right errors and types of errors